Lord God the Father, this trust you, Lord God, as we open up your word, Lord, and put the world aside. It is so wonderful, Lord God, that we can go into a city of refuge in the word of God. And Lord, stay in there with a great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. Teach us. Speak to us, Lord God. Let me not be an ambassador of Satan. Let me not be of the flesh, Lord God. But Lord, let us praise and honor and bless the Lord God Father. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for everybody here. <laughs> so, the Gospel Amen. of John. I did not want to say First John. <laughs> so, we are at... We'll start in verse 1. Repetition. John 1? 1. John 1.1. 1, 1. Start repetition. That's what they're trying to get me to do at work. That's the best thing, you know. I've been I've been quoting John 3.16 for four years. No, at, at, the, oh. at the farmer's market for four years. <laughs> and there are people who quote John 3.16 as soon as we show up. It's amazing. John, they'll say, oh, here we go again. John 3.16. They say it. And it's like, well, it's, a, it's in their head. Hopefully, it'll get in their heart. Yep. It'll be cool, huh? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was light, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name is John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, capital L, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, capital L, but what is that word? It was sent to bear witness of that light, capital L. And that's come a long way. Amen. So what we're looking at, see, look at that. It's too hot. Here comes the breeze. It says we open the word of God. So he is John the Baptist, and this this Bible, like it says, John the Baptist. I mean, some people will take that Baptist and take it as far as the church. This is not the Baptist church. John the Baptist is what? Is a man that baptized people. This is occupation. The light, capital L, is not John. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, we talked about over in Corinthians where he had the small L, that was Satan. Right. And modern Bibles removed that capital L. That's, it's weird. I mean, you take a man's name like Ray. If you write Ray, small R, okay, maybe a ray of light, maybe a stingray. But if you put a capital R, I know you're talking about somebody. That's the big difference. The witness. He's the witness to the light. He's not the light, but was witness to that light. Now, you're standing on the street corner, two cars get in an accident. And a cop comes up to you and says, did you see it? Yeah, I'm a witness. You weren't involved in the accident, but you saw the accident, and you give the details. Now, the better person to give the details is the people who were in the cars. And John, he's not God, he's not Jesus, but he's given the testimony of God and of Jesus Christ. Verse 9. Moving right along. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Amen. So, verse 9. And I, I don't know, uh, Louise, if you, with enough witnessing where people say, well, what about the people in Africa? What about the people who never heard? You will hear that if you haven't heard that yet. And what we're looking at verse 9 is, now watch verse 9. That was the true light, that's Jesus, we know that from our study. Amen. Which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. That's not saving every man. But that is saying every man that cometh into the world by birth is given the knowledge of his heart to the conscience of light of Jesus Christ. When I was a small boy growing up in Connecticut with my friend Kevin in the backyard, we would lay out on the ground and look at the night sky and say, you know what? That had to be God. We never thought of evolution. We never thought of a Big Bang. And we would we would offer earthworms to God. Whatever, I don't know why, but that's we would cut them up and burn them for God. What is that? 
it's not right. But that's God in our heart saying, you know what? There's a superior being. And when you worry about the heathen in Africa or the desert region, they know more about God than you do. Because they acknowledge. The Native Americans acknowledge the great white father. Now God is the father. They may not have worshipped God, but they acknowledge that. But what the Bible is telling us here, every man that's born in this world is given the identity of God and given the identity of a son. And only education can get you out of that. Now, pro another verse here that I don't have, but Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. I'll have to find this one. Proverbs 30. Yeah, thank you. Proverbs chapter 30. I've got to find this one. Verse 1. Start verse 1. Okay, yeah, verse 30, verse 1. This one just came into my heart right now. The words of Agar, the son of Jaca, even a prophecy, the man spake unto Itho, even unto Itho, and you call. Surely I am more brutish than any man, beast-like, and have not the understanding of man. I neither learn wisdom nor have the knowledge of the holy. This guy's saying, I don't know anything about God. I don't know. And that's what you've grown up as, as a young person. I don't know about God. Go over to those kids over there in, in the pool right now and ask them about God. They probably don't even know who Jesus is. And you're worried about people in Africa. Kids in America today are not being grown with Jesus. They're growing up with, if I may say, garbage. <laughs> okay. Who has ascended up into heaven? Or descended? Well, didn't Christ come down? Didn't Christ ascend to the Father in Acts chapter 1? At the end of the Gospel, He says, Mary, don't touch me. I have not ascended to the Father. I thought He didn't know anything about God. And yet, watch, he's going to speak about Jesus. Or who has gathered a wind in his fist? <laughs> Every time we get a Bible study, we get wind. <laughs> That's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Who has bound the waters in a garment? Oh, these questions are only about God. And here's a guy who says, I don't know nothing about God. Who has established all the ends of the earth? Now watch this. Here's a heathen that doesn't know anything about God. Ready? What is his uh, What is his name? What is God's name? That was only revealed to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and the children of Israel. Jehovah, I am. Moses says, God, what shall I tell the children of Israel what my, my, your name is? I am that I am. And this guy is saying, well, what is his name? Watch this. Watch what is his name? What is his son's name? That is a whole reference to God. How do you know he had a son? And this is before the, Jesus Christ. Notice the word prophecy that showed up in verse 1? Yeah. This guy has no knowledge of God. He's a heathen in a strange world with, with perverted gods and, and they half naked and play the bongo drums and stuff like that. And yet his prophecy is about the son of God. He wasn't educated out of God. And he's quick to say, God, you know what? He's humble. I have no idea who you are, God. You have not sent me a preacher. You have not sent me the Word of God. But he acknowledges there's a Son of God. That guy has more chance of being seen in glory. That's right. And the fact is, we are given, back to John chapter 1, we are all given a revelation of God. You cannot come out of your, your mother's womb despite the teaching of 2018, and say you're not life. How can you come out of a womb and say, well, there's no life in the womb? See, you've got to be educated that that womb bears no life. It's just a thing. That's education. You've got to be educated to believe in gods of religion. 
you got to be educated at Big Bang. If you were to find a tribe, and I hate to keep mentioning Africa, but we're talking about people who do not ever know. If you go to a tribe deepest part of Africa that never had any electric or anything like that, and they do their living, and you go to, to the chief or anyone and say, listen, did you know that's by a Big Bang? They would have no idea what you're talking about. That's right. No, no Big Bang. Whatever their word for God. They would be speaking about the, like the gentleman in Proverbs 30. I may not know who that God is, but there is a God. And when you deal with somebody, what about the heathen? Name? What about the, you know evolution? You've been educated. You've been educated. Romans chapter one. Ooh, we are going way away from my notes today. It's great when God speaks to you. Yes, it is. And you'll find, you, Louise, you'll find this when you're witnessing. You'll be telling you know what. I didn't know I knew that Bible verse. And right now, I'm, I'm, these are not in my notes. Yeah. I got to admit, with, with Romans chapter 1, we, we've had months and months and months of study of Romans chapter 1. But, uh, let's see, where shall we start? Verse 16. Romans 1.16 For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, don't be ashamed of the gospel. Go out and preach. It will save souls. Verse 19. Oh, verse 18. 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and, unright and unrighteous of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. That's saying right there, you know what, you're unrighteous, you don't know what you're doing, God reveals to you judgment. And how do you know that happens? One of the biggest things you'll get when you're dealing with a public ministry, the first thing they'll come up to you, judge not me, he be judge. Where'd you get that? You get that from your heart in the Bible. You can't tell me where it is, but you can quote, you know you're going to be judged. God's put in our hearts. God is put in our civil government. If you do wrong, there's policemen. And they will put handcuffs on you. And you will appear before a judge. Everybody knows that. That's common enough. Yeah. Even if you're in Africa, if you do wrong, they will have some kind of judgment before the tribal, whatever it is. Throughout man, where did judging come from? Where did a man sit and say, here's a party here and here's a party here. i got to hear both of your stuff. Where did that come from? It came from God. Because man in his best state, he's vanity, he would have no judge. If there's one thing a criminal does not want, he does not want the police, and he does not want a judge. He wants to be free to do whatever he wants to do. So judging comes from God. Verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifested in them. That's our John 1, 9. It is put into our heart. You may reject it or you may be educated out of it. But it's been there. For me, it's still there. For you, it's still there. You just believe more and more, you got more and love, more light, more and more light, more and more light. And you got saved, there's a light. And you're studying your Bible, there's more light. But it's there, you can either reject it, or you can believe. Once you reject it, as we've been talking about the last few weeks, Darkness. Darkness has no light. Darkness has no movement. Verse 20, for the invisible things of him from the creation. Does that mark one of the verses that we've been doing in John 1? All things were created by, by him, the word. Things seen and unseen. So this matches John 1. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Well, God, I never knew you. No, that's not an excuse because I put into your heart, I put into your mind, I put into you a conscience, there is a God. Even a little kid knows when they steal a cookie. Hide. They hide to go eat it. They know something they're doing wrong and that they're... That's your conscience. Yes. Your conscience comes from God. Right. And the Bible says it can be serious. What do we do? Don't destroy your conscience. You know what kept me out of a lot of trouble? 
my conscience that God gave me and, God, and a God-fearing mother who wasn't even saved yet. I knew if I was going to catch, get, I was going to catch it from mom. Mom intruded into me that there's a judgment unto my conscience. Because that, watch verse 21, because that, when they knew God, not if they knew God, when they knew God, you nail someone down honestly without anybody else around and you go back in their past, there's going to be a time when they will say, that, an atheist will say sometime in their life there was a God. Never does an atheist say, oh, I was born from my mother never to believe in God. I don't care if your mother bouncing on her knee taught you that there was no God in that. You still know inside your heart, respectfully, there's God. Your mother just began, or your father, or whoever, just began to unteach you to do it. But we are born in us. We are a body, soul, and spirit. Our soul is eternal, and God puts in that soul. Here I am. There's no way you can question how a baby's born in a, in a womb without saying God. It starts off with no bones, and by the time the thing is born, he, 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 they say he's got more bones than an adult body. All right, I'm trying to be clean here, but and the fact is that a mother can pass a baby. You know, it's all God. So because that, when they knew God, they glorify Him not as God. They rejected God. Neither were thankful. You guys in America, we have one day dedicated by the government it was to give thanks to God and Jesus Christ for the provisions of the pilgrims. Now we got to hurry up and do our microwave meal and, and because, because we've got to go work at the, at the store that's going to be open. And then we got to hurry up because we got to go back at the store at 10 o'clock at night and camp out so we can be there at 12.01 when they open the doors and waste our money. While the men watch two teens fight over a pigskin and get stupid and physical about it. I always say about those stupid football games, give everybody a football, all right? And let's give God the glory. We are at a point in 2018 on, on Thanksgiving this year. How many Christians, or Christians, I ain't talking about the world, how many Christians in America do you think they're going to bow their head and thank God for that meal that's on the table? Probably not all of them. Yeah, it's amazing. They glorify Him not as God. Now watch. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination. There's your trouble. When you start thinking. And their foolish heart Ready? Was darkened. Now, what is John chapter 1? Now, this is not in my notes, but look how this is lined up with John chapter 1. Once you reject God, you start going in darkness. Mm -hmm. And there may be a point for some, you get so dark, God says, no, nope, I'm not even going to send you a firefly. When you receive Christ, and I'm talking about when you start believing Christ into a salvation, and you start believing more and more after salvation, reading the Bible, it gets light, 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 and boom, we need new eyeballs because this is totally all light. And whether saved or lost, we get to the point, God gives us a revelation. Oh, that's good, I like that. All right, here's another revelation. Wow, that's good. Well, here's a revelation. Well, I don't think so. God, how can you do that? And God said, okay. You start turning a dimmer switch. And you keep rejecting that demonstration goes all the way to his power. And you got to be careful too. Even me, I've been saved since 1986. I'll be reading my Bible going along to him, and the devil will come in. Do you really believe that? And he'll get me start thinking my imagination. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to turn off the light in your life. And it will happen. You will have the devil speak to you while you're reading the Bible. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to get you back in darkness. They say, devil, be gone from me in the blood of Jesus Christ. God, help me. He's trying to turn off the lights, God. He's trying to make me doubt you. And we're not done. Verse 22. Professing themselves, professors. Come on, of all the occupations they had in the world, you have to have a professor on Gilligan's Island, and yet he couldn't put, build a patch for that boat to get off it. 
Why are you a professor? And yet, was there ever a God? Was there ever a church on that island? Nope. Probably not. They needed a preacher. <laughs> Professing themselves to be wise, watch this, they became fools. You're an educated fool. And a lot of them are the, go to monasteries and ministries and, and seminaries. They get, their, they get their education. They're so smarter than God. And they stand in pulpits and they deny God. God says you're a fool. How about this one? All right, I'll pick a simple one that we witnessed. Now, I'm only going to talk about what things we witnessed. Jonah didn't die and go to hell. I heard a preacher say that. Come out before his message. I want you to tell you right now before this congregation, Jonah never died and he did not go to hell. All right, I'm going to mount the pulpit down and preach. You're an educated fool. You are an educated fool. Because if you reject Jonah, you reject... Jesus said that Jonah was three days and three nights in the heart of, right. in the, heart of the whale, so shall I be. So there's a man that rejected the council and his church is dead today. Folks. All right, so we're not done yet. Who changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. Imagery, idolatry, pictures. Jesus looks like an American hippie. That's not Jesus' picture. Matter of fact, you trace that picture back, they had, I forget the story is, but he's a Roman soldier. Pictures you see of Jesus, and there's a name to it. I don't have it written down in my Bible, but there's a name to that man that just pictured Jesus. Pale skin, long blonde hair, he's Jewish. He's short, he's a long dark Black hair. Jehovah Witnesses has a Jesus that's just a man, not God. The Mormons have a UFO flying Jesus that came to America. Mary Baker Eddy has a Jesus that would only eat veggie. Veggie, whatever they call it. Stuff. No gluten. You know? Religions have changed. Roman that's Catholic. That's how Kellogg's, that's, 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 I forget what religion that was. Um, yeah, make the, the Catholics changed God into a woman. Mary. The Queen of Heaven. The Queen of Heaven. Jeremiah. And change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. So they changed the sinless God into a sinner. Zeus, Apollos, Neptune, uh, Hercules. And what did all those gods do? They made it with women. And they fought each other. And they died. God never dies. The wages of sin is death. God's not a sinner. He's not going to die. But Roman and Greek gods, they die. They must be sinners. There you go. There you go. We're not done yet. <laughs> and into birds. A bald eagle. Is it a representation of a god throughout America? And churches, too. Four-footed beasts. You ever see the evolutionary thing, how man came from eight to here we yeah, are today? There it is. Okay? And creepy things. Wherefore God also gave them up, un, up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to desire their own bodies between themselves. Okay? Who changed the truth. They had the truth. All right? You can't change something that you did not have. You can't come out of the shower and say, well, I'm going to change my clothes. You were in the shower with no clothes. Now, if you say, I'm going to change my clothes after the shower, that means you were dressed, you got rid of your, your clothes, and you change your clothes. You have to have to change. Who changed the truth, that so they were given the truth, even the heathen, of God. And then John 1, 9 said that that came unto every man and worshipped that sounds good and served, that sounds good changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever, amen so man has educated 
since Darwin and even before Darwin. Darwin's not the father. It, it's long before that. Now you know, stunning. What do you say about God? Well, our ancestors hung from a monkey tree. Got a hold of an electric shaver with no electricity and shaved off all their hair. And went to college and got a piece of paper and here I am. I'm a hairless ape. I'm a monkey's uncle. What about God? Well, there's no God. I'm God. See my paper? See the college? See my pile of hair over there? Look how great I am. I have come from the amoeba into a stupidity. And what does God say? Go ahead and believe that. You're walking in darkness. And you're going to stand before me one day. And you're going to be guilty. Man will invent a God to get rid of God because he knows about God. It came with birth. Because if I acknowledge God, and if I adhere to God, then I'm accountable to that. I use this expression all the time. In New York Harbor, there's a Statue of Liberty. You can do whatever you want. But what's missing is the, is the Statue of Responsibility. Okay? I can do all the drugs I want. I can have all, everything drug on the market I can have. But don't give me a disease. Don't give me a wasted brain. Don't give me bad organs in my body. Don't give me early death. But I want to do everything. I want to have all the sex I want to have, but I don't want an STD. I don't want to have women come up to me and say, well, here's your children. See, the liberty is there. But what about the responsibility? Now, the Bible says for us Christians, we have liberty. We can do whatever we want. You can choose to sin and pay the penalty, the responsibility of it. Or you can serve God and do right and be ple have God pleased with you. And then when you do sin, if you're really sorry and confess it, God's able to forgive and forget. You can have that righteousness of God and say, you know, they're trying to do that. Or you can have the wrath of God just... I don't have anything to do with it at all. But the very first foundation, even before salvation, is the fact that every human being that is born is born with the knowledge of God. And what that person does throughout their lifetime will depend on the favor of God. Some of them just ignore it. It's not there. It'll be okay in the end. I don't know how, but it'll be okay. Some people will believe God and trust what he said. They're, they'll be right. They'll be good. They'll be made right. And some people say, well, give me your eraser. Let's, let's erase that. And then you are wrong. You have suffered the wrath of God. Now, believe it or not, do you think it happens in the realm of religion, of the Bible, that people will change God? Then I just tell you chapter 1 in, in John, the big L is erased. We cannot adhere to that big L. Come on. You mean there, there's authority better than me with my papers and my, all the people I got in my church? Look at all the people I got in my church. Look how big my church is. You know? Every man. Now let's go to John 3.3. 3. John 3 3. And Jesus answered unto him, Very verily I say unto you, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Something wrong with your first birth. If you've got to be born again. Now let's see what Nicodemus. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he's old? That's a, that's a very good question. The guy walks in and says, Jesus, how are you doing? Jesus, very well, say to you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's impossible, Nicodemus says. That's impossible. Very impossible. Can he enter the second time his mother's womb and be born? No. Jesus answered, very well, say to you, Set the man be born of water. 
My water broke. Got to get me to the right. hospital. Inside that wound, the, the, the fetus is surrounded by water. They call it water. I know it, it's amniotic fluid, something like that. But when a woman's about to give, she goes, oh, my amniotic fluid. No, she says her water. Correct with the Bible. I wonder what other Bibles say. Never mind. I'm not even going to look. So, born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So, Jesus just said, every man that's born of a woman needs to be born again. John just wrote to us in chapter 1, every man that's born of a woman has the knowledge of God. So at some time in your life, after you're born, you know something about God. Sometime after that period, anybody and everybody can be any time, whatever time. You're going to be told that your first birth by your mother is not right. She may be a wonderful, kind, great mother and all that, but she's a sinner, your, your father was a sinner, and you run it all the way back to Adam, you're born in sin. You are born of Adam's nature. You've got to change your birth. Now, you're not going to change your birth if you take that knowledge of God and, and mess with it, and change it, and dilute it. And then the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go out there and tell men who have been born about God, God who I told them about, and then tell them what they don't know. You need to be born again. You need to realize you are a sinner, and in the state you are right now, you're lost. So back to John 1.9. That was the true light, which light is every man that cometh in the world. That is not John. The focus is off John. The focus is on that light. Now, I don't remember when I was born. No one does. I don't know what my eyes reacted to when they first opened and saw the lights of that delivery room. I don't you know. But that's not the light we're talking about. Let's talk about the capital town. No baby opens up their eyes and say, Oh, there's Jesus. See? You see what happens when you mess with that L, that capital L? Every baby born from the mother's womb sees Jesus, but they don't see Jesus. They see light from God in their heart. And the Bible says for a parent, train up the child. I can't put that book. And the way that he is when he grows up, he'll walk in that way, in that way, in that way, in that way. Well, who said that? Now, I'm talking to Christians, with this video, I'm talking to Christians and not the world people. If, if a Christian is not raising their children the way the Bible tells them, they're wrong, and they're going to settle accounts with God. Christian education in their parents is not sending their child to Sunday school. It's not sending their child to church service. It's not sending their child to vacation Bible. It's what you do in that house, father, husband, with your family all week long. Sunday school is only 45 minutes, maybe 30 minutes a, a week. Church service is what, at the most? Three hours a week. That's not enough time to train up that child to do right. Especially if you're not doing right as a parent. So again, there's that liberty to have children and responsibility. Every man, every man, all men, some way, are given light by Jesus. John 3.16. Back in my notes. John 3.16. And it's a wonderful, great God that does tell us in us, even though we don't know. And as I said, one of the great things you do as you begin witnessing and witnessing and witnessing, as you read and study the Word of God and read and study the Word of God, you'll come across somebody one day and be talking to them, and this is exciting still to me. Even right now, there's passages we went to that mark what we're doing, and I don't have them in my notes. You will walk away from that conversation like, wow. You didn't know you knew it, but God had already put it in you, waiting for that day for you to use it. 
And that's the same thing that God put in you when you're born, that there's a God, and then one day you're listening, and you get saved. It's like, wow. And you can look back and see how Satan tried to educate you out of that. So John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. So God wants you saved. Okay? He that believes on Him is not condemned. I'm not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Already. Why? Because you were born with the knowledge of God. You've done nothing with it. God holds you liable for what He's shown you about Him. So when we are born in this world, and as Tracy said, that first time you steal the cookie and you hide, you would just acknowledge you're a sinner. Now you're condemned. And not before your mother and father, but before God. Now what are you going to do about it, kid? I'm going to hide. That's not the correct answer. What's your parents supposed to teach you about that? You come up, you confess it, you say you're sorry, and you make restitution. That's what you do to God. Parents will to teach you about stealing. The reaction. Not, oh, the cops are bad people, and, you know, just go to jail for six months, and that's okay, and you'll come out and even work. That's not the correction. So, how can we be condemned already? The fact is that God has shown us. That man back there in Proverbs 30 had no knowledge of the holy, but guess what? He had knowledge of the holy. He had knowledge of things that people today don't even have knowledge of. This side of hell. What's the name of God? Jehovah, Jesus Christ, Almighty God, I am. No one had that revelation back then. He did. He said, what's God's name? What's the name of the Son of God? We all know that. No one back there in Proverbs 30 knew that. But he had an idea. He had a thought. He had something to do. There's a Son of God somewhere. There's the Son of God. I don't know who He is, but there's the Son of God. And you'll get people, and you got the disciple in the mouth. They will be coming to you seriously saying, you know, I've had dreams, I have problems, and there's something like this. And they're seriously searching. God is giving to them. And then there are just people who are mocking and making fun of you and stuff like that. But don't rest, don't put everybody off there. You know what? I had this dream or I've seen an angel. Because Cornelius saw an angel on this side of hell. And the Bible says, entertain angels unaware. There may be things in people's life that God put them there to, re to reveal him. And he might be using you to tell them. You know, I, I got in this car accident. And they told me I died. I'm coming back to life. That's your job now to preach to them the gospel. You believe God, I, I, sometimes, I, don't expect them to know what God is. you got to show them what God is through the Scriptures. Because God doesn't show all the light. God is no respect to the person of sex, age, right. race, or creed. But when that child is born, whatever nationality, reality, whatever sex, whatever, same age. Every child that's born to their same age. God puts him to every man. John 1. For God so loved the world, there are people now condemned. Because God told them who he was. And we are coming to the point in America where God is out. Now, I was born in 1968. I'm going to be 50 years old. I grew up in a time when you can go on Christmas, I'm not for Christmas, but you can go to stores, you will hear carols about Jesus, even though they're wrong. You will hear songs about Jesus. Little manger and all that, and we three kids. Okay, they're wrong, but you heard about Jesus in the grocery store. What are you going to do with that revelation? Now you're growing up with grandma got ran over by Santa Claus and Santa Claus is making love to your to your mother. 
That's not Jesus. So what Satan has done in this country by taking the Bible out of school, they're also taking it out of the prisons. The Lord is working on that right now to remove the Bible out of prisons. So, what are you going to do in, in a godless, Bibleless society? Never mind the heathen. There are kids in the public school system that don't even know what Jesus was. We were told by our pastor that there was a woman, there was a child in a, in a grade school, I assume it was. When they kept on mentioning Jesus, you get upset, get upset, cry. And finally she raised her hand and said, little girl, what's wrong? Why are you getting upset? She said, why are you cussing? Why are you cussing? The only name that Jesus for her was a cuss for her. Oh, she didn't know about salvation. So what America is doing is they are removing that revelation. But you can't remove it. As I said, as a kid, six, seven years old, whatever I was, there was a God in the heaven and he wanted earthworms. And there was a God that I sat in a Catholic church, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old, and I would look at that imagery, and I'd look at that eye, and I'd say, that's not you, God. Never opened the Bible. I looked at all that stuff as a mess. And when I was a child, and certain things came up in my life, and I'd go to that altar to God and say, God, this is not you. I'm coming to you. I don't know who you are. But I come to you. And in religion taught me so that Jesus Christ suffered and died on the cross. Good Friday. Yes, okay. Three days later and three nights later, which is not Good Friday Sunday, but he arose from the grave. Then how come religion puts him back up on that cross, nailed there, for 365 days of the year? See, that don't make sense. See, God showed me through a Catholic church that Jesus was born through a virgin, Virgin Mary. Taught me that. I, Lord, I believe that. I believe that. Okay. He died on Calvary's cross for you. He was whipped and he carried his cross. You know, I forget what he called it. The session of the cross. Okay, Lord, I believe that. Honestly, I believe that. Okay. 25 cents, you can, you can burn a candle and have your prayers answered. Lord, I'm going to give you 25 cents. But I'm going to pray to you. But I don't know what this candle is. Okay, fine. Pray to Mary, and she'll get you to heaven. Mm -hmm. now, I, I, Lord, there's something wrong with that. Now, I'm talking about my own personal life, but the Lord, there's something wrong with that. All right? And pray to these idols. I'm like, they have eyes. And I never read the Bible in my life. They have eyes, but they can't see me. They can't hear me. Their ears are closed. So I'm going to pray to you, God. I don't understand. Proverbs 30. One day I'm walking, in, I'm going to use the bathroom in the Catholic Church, and there, on the cooler downstairs, there's the Bud Man. He's the Budweiser guy. I'm like, what on earth is that doing here? Advertising beer in the church. Lord, there's something wrong. So at the time, I was 16, 17, they said, you want to go to church anymore? Absolutely not. No. And I went out in the world, I lived worldly, I got drunk and uh, smoked, and you name it, I did it. I'm not even going to tell you. My grandma came to me one day and said, listen, we found this right church and all that. Hey, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I'm sick of church. Come on, come up to church. The Baptist church. Ooh, what's that? Oh, I don't know. What, okay. All right, Lord, just shut her up. I'll go. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm not going to have a good time, but I'll make you happy, God. I'll show up and shut her up. So I sat in there. The preacher preached the gospel. At the end of the message, God said, what? God, i got to do something. I'm not right with you. Get my grandma phone call on the phone. And say, I need to talk to somebody. Saturday afternoon, I met with a guy from the church at an open Bible. He told me I'm a sinner. Told me I'm going to hell. I'm not right. What do you say? I don't want to go to hell. I want to get right. Amen. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Got down on my knees and received Jesus Christ as my Savior. Boom. I'm saved. My name is right in the last book of life. Now what are you going to do? I don't know. What am I going to do? You need to get back to him. You going to get baptized? Okay, next week. Follow that. Got baptized. What are you going to do now? Well, I've already gone to church three, three times a week. You, know, you need to go tell people about Jesus. Really? When do you guys go out and tell people about Jesus? Thursday night we go tell people. Okay, be there. Be there Thursday. Tell people about Jesus. Oh, look at this. they got Christian comic books. I'll gather all the Christian comic books together. I'll read them all. I'll collect them. 
Uh, come here. Go talk to Sally. Tell him about those Christian comic books. I said, you know, those are not for you to keep. They're for you to give out to people. No, I'm not going to give them out to people. They're a witness. You're supposed to tell people what Jesus needs help tell about them. Really? Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. I'm getting them out like crazy. You're supposed to read your bio. Okay, read my bio. Revelation. Read Revelation. I started praying to the devil to get saved. Don't just read Revelation. All right. Go to Genesis, start reading through the Bible. Now, start studying the Bible. If I was studying the Bible, I started studying the Bible. I'm in like my third church now because the churches are getting bad. I want you to go get an education because they're going to require an education. They want that piece of paper, but I'll work with you. I did all that. I'm an official doctor. <laughs> Doesn't mean anything. Now, I want you to go. Now, I want you to do is I want you to go down to the street corner. I want you to take, well, actually, I want you to take your daughter. I want you to make a sign. I want you to stand on the side of the street and just hold the sign for me. Okay. Oh, that's what you guys did, huh? And then take my son, give him gospel tracts, and I want to pass them all out. Okay? Now I want you to go to the police department and tell them what you're going to do. Okay? Officer, this is what we're going to do. Just let you know. That, hey, the officer stood behind that desk and told me, he said, if I had the opportunity, if they told me, I'd be happy to throw you in jail. Mm. That's not what I was expecting. I will be sure and happy to throw your can't say it in jail. Oh and your gosh, kids. Yeah. I'll say, okay, fine. The Lord says, I want you to go down the corner, uh, I think it's Boswell and Main Street. I want you to get out with your Bible. I got the Bible in the car. I said, I want you to preach the word. Okay, got out there, got my Bible. Lord, I'm going home. <laughs> get in the car, get out there and preach. Okay, Lord, ready? Get out there. And this happened five or six times, make the story short. Okay? Finally, I opened up my mouth, John 3, saying, For God so loved the world. And all these windows started opening. All these people came out of their businesses. And they're all looking at me, and I'm preaching to God. I walked out of that, I was like, Wow, God, you did that. Now, when I'm telling you all that for this, I accepted the light. I believed the light. Kept doing the light. And today, now, I'm involved in a public ministry at the flea market where people are coming to me for answers. I'm able to give them Bible answers. I pray I don't deceive them. I pray that God be blessed. Jesus Christ will be honored. Before that, God gave me the ministry four years at the farmer's market where I now preach the word of God boldly and Satan has sent all kinds of opposition. And my daughter is, str is strong in the Lord and able to take care of it. And now here we have Bible study here. Here we study the word of God. There's light, 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 light. At the one moment I said, God, I'm not, I'm hoping I don't say it. No, I'm going to call Louise. I'm sick and tired of this Bible study. No one's coming. No one's listening. I'm tired. I'm fed. No, I'm just saying, if I did that. Oh. At that moment, God, now what, what if God would, what if God were to build a church here? And I say, God, I'm not doing it no more. Could that church build? No. Because I said no. And then the light would be shut off. And God does things in your life. And you've got to trust and, he's got a plan. and obey. But that all started from a little boy that cut up earthworms of God. And I went to the public school education system from kindergarten to, to grade 12. And they tried to teach me out of God through evolution. And I said, God, that's no. Jesus, the day, April 21st, 1987, I said, yes, to Jesus. And I was born, as everybody else was born, with the knowledge of God. Now, what you do with it. And there are tens of thousands of millions of people today that reject God for whatever reason. And their lives are miserable and unfulfilled. And they are condemned before they even hear the gospel. Why? I'm no better than anybody else. I, it was not no special revelation to me that there was a God. It came with Paul. My, my friend Kevin shared the same thing. There's a God. I don't know where Kevin is today. I don't know if he's saved. I have no idea. But it, let's say he turned the other side of the spectrum that he's lost going to hell. How can two children worshiping God with earth go the way that we've gone? One is fulfilling God and doing right.
And the other one I don't know. And that comes back back to John 1. John chapter 1. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word. I believe the Word of God. Amen. I believe the King James. Only the King James. Hey. And the Word was with God. I believe Jesus Christ is with God today at the right hand. And He's coming back for me. And the Word was God. I believe God is Jesus and Jesus is God. I hate to have those people come to my door and talk me out of it. There are saved people in the Jehovah Witnesses, but they have no more light because they acknowledge that God is not Jesus. They're saved, but the light went out. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. I believe in the Creator. Romans chapter 1. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I believe that. And the life was the light of men. Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. The light that shineth in darkness, the darkness comprehended in that. Those are the people who don't believe. I'm not in darkness. You realize we took a Bible study today, and my notes are supposed to be down here. But God said, no, go over here. God said, no, no, no. no. Forget what you wrote. Go over here. And without even knowing, they had matched exactly to what we had done in John. A worldly Christian can't do that. An unsaved man can't do that. And it, be it begins with every born child. They're without excuse. And they're condemned if they have not totally, fully believed on Jesus. And then when they believe on Jesus, they're condemned if they don't read the Word of God because as a Christian you're supposed to read of God and you're supposed to find out what the Bible says and you're supposed to find out that what the Bible says to do and what not to do and you go against it. You don't have to buy the Bible today. It's online. It's free. Libraries do hold, I think. If I go to the library, I think we'll check. The Word of God. You still can buy a Bible at, at uh, Walmart. The bookstores still have a Bible. Now, you got to go through all the messy Bibles to find a King James. Now, beware. Now, let me say this warning, too. Because when we were at the farmer's market last week and two weeks ago, found a King James Bible. It was a small print, good size. Oh, I said, this one I want. Even though it had Pentecostal on the front, I said, you know what, Lord? I want this Bible. God says, go over to Acts chapter 7. I said, Tracy, come here. I, I forgot. Is, is this supposed to say Jesus or... Joshua. I forget which one it was. I said, this one says Joshua. I said, Tracy, look at this. I said, Tracy, look at this. It says King James. You got to check it. Even though it says King James on the cover doesn't mean it's the yep. Word of God. You have to check it. You have to check the verses. Oh, we'll have to show uh, Acts chapter 7 where it says Jesus. We'll show you in a minute after. But, um, but, Every man, right here at 45. Every man is given the knowledge of God. Mine says Jesus. Good. Yep. Then you gotta go Yay. Right. Now see, that's a revelation. There. Now, yeah, now, I now, what is that revelation? That. Now, what's that revelation for you, Lily? You have to say, you know what? I want, to, I want my own Bible. Well, I think you gotta get a King James. Okay, Roberto has King James. Okay. Well, okay. Well, you say what you do is, you know, the first thing you do. This is what Tracy does. This is what I do. Okay, Acts chapter 7. And there's three places to check for King. Just because it says King James. Alright. You may open up your drawer in the refrigerator. It may say cheese. Process is not really cheese. It's just oils. This is just oil. But what gave you that insight? The Word of God. God working in you and say, hey, you know what? There's perverted Bibles out there. Keep going with the life of God. Don't worry about other people as far as their life. Amen. Just preach the gospel. It would almost have been a good teaching tool just to buy that little Bible just to show it to people. Like yeah. like Louise, look, this says King James and it's not King James. Right Lord God, the Father, this... thank you, Lord God. Uh, we went off the cycle from my notes, but Lord, maybe someone here, maybe someone on the internet, Lord God. And Lord, I just love you that you sent the breeze. Cool. Here comes another one. 
Lord, I went through my history testimony of a young man, a wicked man, to come to you as a Savior. And Lord God, before my family and friends, and we're all family, we're all children of God. Amen. God, I don't know how to thank you that you show me the air of the Catholic Church. It did not stick to me. It did not adhere to me. And Lord God, only by your spirit, only by your revelation, only by your light that we spoke about today. Amen. Now am I saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 How about that? Uh -oh. You wave your hand?